I heart, get ready. Fantasy football is here. Welcome to the Scout Fantasy Show. ScoutFantasy.com is home to the Fantasy Football World Championships and the best players in the world. Real money winners giving their secrets to help you win. Now exclusively on iHeart. This is the Scout Fantasy Show with your host, the one, the only, Dr. Roto. Hey there, everybody. It's Dr. Roto. Get out the insurance cards. Get out the copay. The office is open, my friends. It is Waiver Wire Wednesday. Let's give you the names you need, the names you want, the names you must have in order to compete in your leagues. Now look, you may have had a very good draft, but you win and lose based on the waiver wire. Some leagues have trades, some don't. You're in high stakes, you certainly don't. You're in a home league, you do, but in a high stakes league, it's all about the waiver wire. Are you using it effectively? How much are you spending? So we will discuss that. What's a good bid? What's a bad bid? What's a crazy bid? Don't go crazy on me. Don't go for $900 on James Conner. He might be worth it, actually. Don't go for $900 on Philip Lindsay. He's not worth it. We'll get to that later. All right, let's start out with some quarterbacks. Joe Flacco looked great. I have no problem. You want to pick him up on the waiver wire? Couple of dollars. I'm not in love with Flacco. The Buffalo Bills stink. They are wretched. He will not play them again this year. Lamar Jackson is going to play more as the season goes on. Be careful. I like Case Keenum. Is he a sexy pick? No. He's like Case Keenum looks in the mirror and says, I'm like Andy Dalton. I'm just on a different team. Right? So what would you bid on Andy Dalton? Maybe Keenum's a little bit better than that. Not much. Speaking of Andy Dalton, he's about what I pay for Case Keenum. These are guys that I don't want to use. I don't want to start. But I'm willing to start in the right week. I'd certainly start Keenum against Seattle. I certainly start Dalton against Indianapolis. Those are good starts. Would I start uh, Keenum against uh, the Jaguars? No. Right? So let's be smart about that. Ryan Fitzpatrick. Oh my God, how good did he look? He looked amazing. Would I pick him up? Not this week. Not against the Eagles. Good luck. The Eagles and the Saints, the only thing they have in common... Is that they play football. Eagles defense much better. Do you see how, what they did to Matt Ryan? I don't like the I don't like uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick this week. If you're in a dynasty league, I assume you have Josh Allen. But there's something I liked about Josh Allen. He looked pretty good. I was impressed. He didn't look great. Let's not go crazy. But he looked good enough. Good enough for me to be interested. All right, let's get to the running backs. Leonard Fournette grabs his hamstring. As soon as he walks off the field, I say to everybody in Las Vegas, that doesn't look good. That doesn't look good. And of course it doesn't look good. So would I bid on TJ Yeldon? You better believe it. And this is why smart players draft Yeldon in the draft. Because you just know you're one injury from Leonard Fournette for him having value. And now you have to spend $200 on TJ Yeldon, maybe more, when in the draft you're just spending a 14th round pick. Genius. That's why Chad Schrader wins every year. He makes moves like this. Why don't we make these moves? We should. Philip Lindsay. Now, I am a huge Royce Freeman supporter. I don't like Devontae Booker. I think he stinks. So, at the very least, Philip Lindsay is the new Devonta Booker. Best case scenario, he may be better than that. That said, I am not going crazy. Now, here's why. I watch a lot of college football. I pay a lot of attention to the draft. This is what I do. I am Dr. Roto. This is why you're listening to these podcasts. Because I'm attuned to what is happening in the NFL. It worries me that I don't know Philip Lindsay. It does. Now, could I be wrong? Absolutely. Have there been times that I've been wrong in the past? Absolutely. But I'm not usually wrong. And even if I'm wrong, I kind of know the guy. Here with Philip Lindsay, I'm like, well, it may be familiar. That makes me worried. Because if I don't know him well enough, I don't want to sink $672 into him tonight. Will I throw a token bid? Sure. I don't want him to go away for free. I don't want some dude to get him for 20 bucks, so I'm certainly going to throw a bid in there. 
but I'm not, I am not going to bid my farm on him. How am I wrong? I will admit I'm wrong. It'll be the worst move I made all year. But what if he gets injured next week and you just spend $723? Good luck with that. That's a big mistake. Personally, I like Jalen Richard. Plays on a crappy team. And this guy is like the Buck Allen of the, of the Raiders. He's going to get you like 10, 11 points every week and stink. Raiders stink. So I'd rather spend a whole lot less. And now let me give you a guy. What about Corey Clement? So let me tell you about something about psychology. And I know a little something about psychology, especially because Mrs. Roto is a psychologist. If you have to live with me, you better know something about psychology because I'm crazy. The point being is in Las Vegas, the Thursday night game sways a lot of people. When the players play well, their draft value goes up. When the players play poorly, the draft value goes down. Corey Clement's draft value nosedive. Pew! Why? Because J.J. scored two touchdowns and Clement went like five for 26. Not interested. But really, I liked Corey Clement before the game started. Is one game going to define Corey Clement's season? It might for you. It won't for me. I'm going to draft Corey Clement. So I encourage you to think about the same thing. Let's turn to wide receivers. Dougie Baldwin is injured. Fact. He told you as much. He said, look, I'm only 80 to 85% healthy. That's what he said. And now he's out. Could be out for a while. Tyler Lockett, if he's there in your league. Pick him up. Great downfield threat. Jerron Brown, the guy who I took in round 19 or round 20 of every draft in Las Vegas. Why? Because I knew this was going to happen. I knew Doug Baldwin's in was injured and Tyler Lockett gets injured walking into the bathroom in the middle of the night. So Jerron Brown is their next guy. I'm not a Brandon Marshall guy. I think Brandon Marshall had a really good week last week because he had the narrative. Hey, to the Broncos, wanted to play well. Okay, the narrative's gone. I'll take me some Jerron Brown. I think he's a better player. All right, Quincy and Nunwa might be available in your league. If he is, get him. If he is, get him. PPR machine. Now, the Jets are not a great team. I get that, but Quincy and Nunwa is a pretty good player, and he's highly recommended. Philip Dorsett. I begged people in Vegas, Philip Dorsett, and people I partnered with, no, I don't like him, no, I don't like him. I liked him. I do. And I think he's going to be good. This guy was a really good receiver in college when he was at the U. It just took him time. The game moved too quickly for him. He just wasn't ready. Now he looks ready. Now he looks good. And without Julian Edelman, he could be legitimately the best, second best receiver on that team. Well, after Chris Hogan. And when Edelman comes back, Hogan's the big play receiver. He's not an 8-9 target a game guy. Edelman is, but Dorsett could still get five or six catches a game. I really like him. How about Geronimo Allison? Man, this guy's one injury away from being really good. Whether it's Cobb or Devontae Adams, if one of those guys is out, you, you stash and cash Geronimo Allison. You'll be happy you did. Same thing for Kenny Galladay. In small leagues and and shallow leagues, please get Kenny Galladay. I'm telling you right now, I have Galladay with more yards than Marvin Jones. I never, was never going to take Marvin Jones in any draft that I was in in Vegas. None. Why? Because I like Galladay so much. And let me give you one more guy. Dante Pettis. Dante Pettis looked pretty darn good. Dropped a couple, dropped a short touchdown pass, but outside of that, it looked pretty good. And Jimmy G is going to need weapons, especially if Marquise Goodwin is out. Finally, you have Mike Williams. Please, whatever you do in life, do not drop him. I know he didn't go off like you expected to him last week. I get that. But Tyrell Williams dropped a short touchdown pass, as did Travis Benjamin. That tells me everything I need to know. Mike Williams is going to get in there and he's going to play and he's going to play well. All right? Tight end, Jared Cook. Now, Jared Cook, very good target. I just have trust issues with Jared Cook because he's led me down this path before. And then he's crapped on my head. So I don't normally want to overbid for Jared Cook. I'll bid on Jared Cook, but I don't want to overbid on Jared Cook. Will Disley. Now look, Denver's never good against a tight end. That was good play scheming. It's not that Will Disley's so good. I think he's okay, but he's not great. 
Ed Dixon's hurt. Nick Vanek can block, but he can't catch. Will Disley's all right. But don't bid more than like 20, 30 bucks. You bid 100 bucks on Will Disley. I'm going to be laughing at you. I'm going to think you wasted money. Janu Smith. So sometimes guys become good waiver wire pickups because of injuries. Janu Smith is one of those guys. No Delaney Walker. Hello, Janu Smith. Janu Smith, good solid player. I worry about the quarterback play. Ian Thomas. Ian Thomas is going to be there. He's going to be the new the tight end in, in Carolina. They drafted him as the heir apparent to Greg Olson. Greg Olson, I knew this was going to happen. I said as much. I said Delaney Walker in my off-the-wall visionary commentary. I said Delaney Walker and Greg Olson worried me. Why? I saw the arrow pointing down. It's what happens in the NFL. It's hard to stay healthy. Very hard to stay healthy. I don't love Ian Thomas. I like John U. Smith more because that year that John U. Smith had playing already has advanced him immeasurably. Very important. Right? I think that's a big thing. Rookie tight ends don't normally perform well. Now look, one last thing before I let you go. If a guy didn't play well last week, don't cut him. You can't win fantasy football like that. Hold patient, 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 then you cut. Be extra patient with guys. You drafted them for a reason. Remember that reason and use them. Okay? Remember that reason and use these guys. Now, if it's week four, we got to cut bait. But I'm going to play them until another three weeks. Let's see what happens. It's worth it in the end. All right, but it's time now to put away the insurance cards, put away the copay. The office is closed, my friends. Speaking of being worth it, ScoutTFS.com, totally worth it. Sean Childs updated his projections on for that optimizer. Did his FanDuel and DraftKing projections. Looking pretty strong with Sean Childs. Love what he did. I saw him in Vegas last week. He was a winner on FanDuel, big time. You want to be a winner in DFS? You join ScoutDFS.com. All right, guys, wishing you a great day. Good luck on the waiver wire. We'll review those bids. This is tomorrow. We'll review those bids. This is Dr. Roto saying be well and take care. Thanks for listening to the Scout Fantasy Show. There's never been a better time to join the Scout Army. Visit scoutfantasy.com. Use the promo ROTO for two months free. And don't forget, fantasy players, please thumbs up the podcast on the iHeart app. See you next time. Go Scouts.